Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Split Say DIY, and I thought I'd do something kind of different today. Uh, the Monosynth is a pedal that Electro Harmonics released at NAMM 2019 this year, and I have to say it's the first pedal that wasn't Arduino or Raspberry Pi based in the past, like, probably decade that I was like, yeah, I really want that. Because I'm, I'm a simple guitarist. I just want some distortion, some chorus, basically Kurt Cobain's tone. And once you achieve that, I'm kind of done. I'm over it. Uh, but one thing that I had been looking for uh, was a pedal that was more kind of synthy sounding. Because I do like electronic music, and I thought it'd be cool if I found some sort of pedal that did like a synth tone it'd be good to integrate that with my guitar, and I just thought that would sound cool. But everything I was seeing was basically just a glorified delay pedal, so I hadn't really, I'd kind of given up. Uh, but then, they showed this, and oh man, here's a little taste of how it sounds. Is that not amazing? Like, what? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. When I heard the demo, I was like, oh, excuse me. But anyway, it is a really cool pedal. Basically what's going on is you have your dry signal and the synth signal, and you can adjust those. They're two volume levels, so you can kind of mix them together, which is nice. Then you have the control knob for the synth and the sensitivity. So if you want it to be like super staccato and everything, like you can like up that, things like that. And then they have the different types. And there's built-in presets, but you can also save your own presets on here. Now, um, this is not a pedal review. What I want to do, that's some cool stuff I just described. How is it doing that? I want to see what's inside this box. I want to do a little teardown. Now I'm going to tell you up front, I don't know what I'm going to find, if anything. Uh, and also, I'm not going to pretend to tell you that even if we do see something, that I'm going to be able to tell you what it does. I'm really selling this video to you right now, huh? Basically, I just want to see if I can at least see like maybe some ICs or components to see how this thing is ticking. I'm also just kind of curious, you know, is it using through-hole components, service mount components? Because traditionally, guitar pills are still using through-hole, so I'm, I'm curious on that end too. This is more of an exploration of what is inside this stomp box that is so unique and cool. I mean, clearly there's got to be something happening if you're able to save presets, so I'm just curious. I'm just legitimately curious. And I'm not going to promise you anything, but I'm saying worst case scenario here, we get some glamour shots of the innards of some electronics, which I'm not mad at. It looks like it's going to be pretty easy to get into. It just has four Phillips head screws that are kind of large in each corner. Doesn't even look like we're going to have to take off the feet, which is always nice. Uh, so yeah, I think it's, it's time to just kind of dive in and see what we can discern on the innards of this box. Now, as I said, there are no promises with this teardown. Uh, this is an exploration. Uh, and these are new, these have only been out a couple months. Uh, another reason why I want to do a teardown, we're going to start with these screws here in the corner, and I think, if luck will have it, we'll be in after that, um, is I, I, I haven't been able to find anything else online. I was even looking today, see if I could see anything, maybe someone done a little bit of analysis or anything like that, you know, just so I could have some direction, but all I get is basically the same press release that Electro Harmonics has on their website, which it's a very nice press release. It's nicely written, uh, but I, I, I want more. Um, so yeah, I have this one more, then we'll see what, what happens. I had mentioned to a friend of mine, we'd been discussing this pedal, and uh, he was thinking about getting one as well. I mentioned I wanted to do a teardown, and his, his face, he was so horrified. He, he couldn't understand why someone wanted to take something like that apart. Um, but, okay. Let's see. The big reveal. We're in. How beautiful is that? We've got a blue 
PCB, uh, and there are a lot of ICs happening. Uh, so let's let's take a closer look. So the first thing I notice opening this up is that we have some kind of like debug ports. So I'm thinking you could like possibly reprogram the chips so that you, you have access to it, which is really cool. I've, I've never seen that on a pedal. Granted, I've never had a pedal uh, in this genre, but um, still interesting to see. Also interesting to see that it's mainly service mount components with the exception of some caps, which is fairly common in audio circuits. Uh, so uh, that is interesting. Um, we have our quarter inch jacks, nothing too crazy there. Our DC jack, barrel jack, uh, it takes nine volt by the way. Now there are a lot of ICs happening on the board as you can probably tell. Uh, so that's telling me that these effects are digital, which we could have guessed, but we've got an analog devices IC here. I'm gonna look up some of these chips so then we can chat about them and maybe try to get a slightly better idea of what's going on with the circuit. Okay, kids, I went, I looked up all the ICs on here and I got some information for you. So uh, I have my handy dandy notebook here and I made like a little bit of a diagram to kind of mirror. It's beautifully drawn as you can see. Um, my artistic prowess knows no bounds. Uh, and uh, so basically we're gonna kind of go around a little circle here um, and just kind of talk about the silicone that's on this board. Uh, so first up, I think the star of the show is this right here, which is right here on the actual physical board. And it is a analog devices, black fin uh, BF592 processor. Uh, now I'm gonna have data sheets for all these down in the description so you can look at them a little bit more in depth yourself if you feel so inclined, but I'll just kind of give you an overview. Um, this is kind of the brains of the operation, clearly. Um, it's an embedded processor, it's 32-bit, and all over the data sheet it just kept saying risk-like. Uh, so basically, yeah, program and everything like that. And I'm sure that one of these interfaces can probably get you into it. I don't have that kind of equipment, nor will I pretend that I know how to do that, but it's probably what's happening there. Now, companion to the Blackfin is this chip right here, which is number seven in our handy dandy notebook right here. And that's the flash. Uh, it's a Micronix MX25L4006E. Quite the catchy name. It has four megabits of uh, space on there. And I also am gonna assume that one of these things probably gets you into the flash as well. Data sheet has a ton of information on reading and writing from it. And I did see a note um, in the electroharmonic sheet, which I will relieve down in the description that you can um, put the default settings on these effects back on fairly easily, quote unquote, because you can uh, save your own user parameters. So I thought there would be some sort of flash thing happening here, just wasn't sure how it was implemented. That's how it's implemented. There we go. Uh, now that's kind of, uh, as far as the brains go, that's kind of it. The rest is some stuff that you would expect to find um, with digital audio and just guitar pedals in general. Next, I've labeled number two uh, is a 10-bit audio digital converter. And that's this chip right here. Uh, and that is a TI-80C 1085022. Very catchy names. Uh, so it has eight inputs. As I said, it's an audio digital converter. Uh, and it communicates, uh, it can communicate over SPI. The Blackfin specifically said stuff about having SPI. So I'd be curious to see if that's how it is actually, in fact, communicating. Um, but that was uh, one thing that stuck out to me, at least, uh, on both data sheets, the specific mention of SPI. Uh, so moving right along, we have this long boy here, uh, and that is a stereo audio codec or a DAC, basically. And the name on that is an AKMAK4621. Uh, that's a little bit more catchy. Uh, it's a 22-bit, 192 kilohertz, uh, and I mean, it's a DAC. So that gives you that sweet, sweet, deep tone with this pedal. Uh, 
Now next, we're going into op amp land. That's what these three remaining ICs are right here. They're all op amps. The one right here, which I've chosen to label as number four, is an MCP6002. Um, and it's just kind of your standard run-of-the-mill op amp. I actually think I've heard that name before, but not 100% sure. Uh, now, number five, this one right here, another long boy, uh, is an STMC33079. That's a low noise quad op amp. Uh, and then the last one down here, small boy, is a TI TLC Tender Love and Care uh, 2272. Um, and that's a rail to rail dual low noise op amp. Now I want to kind of talk about these components in relation to the tone of this pedal, which you heard briefly, and I'll also link down uh, some of my more preferred demos of the pedal as well. What really struck me about it is the richness of the tone and the variety of the tones and everything like that. And I, I think of what we, we look at here, we've got 24-bit, 192 kilohertz DAC, right? We've got this increased dynamic range, specifically op amp happening. Um, and we have a 32-bit processor and I think all of these components were chosen so that it would have just this really deep tone. I think they just wanted to have it sound really thick and um, just really substantial. And I think they achieved that. And I'm not going to pretend that I know how the circuit is working exactly, uh, but just based on what I know about components and audio and what I know from playing around this pedal, um, I think that's, we can definitely see that that is happening here actively. So uh, I've also decided that for now, at least, unless there is a lot of interest, and I mean a lot of interest, I'm going to keep it in the housing for now and not look at the other side for two reasons, two reasons. One, and really probably the most important one, I can't seem to get these knobs off without going a bit aggressive. Uh, and I'm not emotionally prepared yet to take pliers to these things to take them off. Because to get to the other side of the board, I presume I will have to do that. Also, this will take some finagling as well. I definitely, without a doubt, and will have to um, attack these. And to be honest with you, not to wimp out here, this is still a new pedal. And it's a pretty pedal, and I don't really want to scratch it up yet. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and then the other thing is, I, I kind of reached under the board a little bit from what I could. I wasn't feeling a lot of components. It wouldn't surprise me if on the other side of the board, we're just seeing kind of the trim pots and maybe some like traces and stuff. Because obviously like these are through hole to the other side of this. And you can see the through hole of the trim pots coming through here. You can barely see them because they're kind of like embedded amongst the surface mount components. Uh, it's interesting how they did that. Um, so I'm not sure if we'll really see anything that interesting. So for now, I'm going to hold off. If you really, 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 really want to see the other side of the board, if you know more about this kind of stuff than me and you're like, no, no, there be treasure and dragons there, then hey, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a go. But uh, I think otherwise I'm going to stop here though. Um, and you know, I, I enjoyed this exploration. We got to see the guts of a new pedal. We got to talk about some ICs. We made a diagram. Um, yeah, I think overall for what we set out to do, a success. So that's gonna, that's gonna do it for this video. If you liked it, toss me a thumbs up. Leave any questions or comments down below. I'll have data sheets to all these uh, ICs that I discussed in the description, as well as some links for this pedal as well. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing more content like this. If you want to see more guitar pedal teardowns, let me know. Um, they would, this would probably be as deep as we go. So if you're cool with that, like we could, we could proceed. Um, and until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY, explorer of the monosynth.